The International Space Station is a fully operational home and laboratory in space. From here, crews conduct new types of scientific research that cannot be duplicated in the gravity of Earth. The lessons and data obtained from the station will pave the way for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit. It will also serve as a research platform to investigate new space system designs. Building an invention that is capable of conducting such research while at the same time sustaining human life is a complex and challenging undertaking. Station? Mm -hmm. Wow, Steve, did you see this? Oh, no, not since we here, but... Well, you gotta come and see this, bud. Getting the hardware into space is only part of the challenge. A piece at a time, the station must be put together in Earth orbit by people. The station evolves considerably from the beginning of its assembly in 1998 with each mission building upon the success of the previous flight. The station sees the addition of components providing power, air, communication, living accommodations, and a laboratory for scientific work. The architecture of the station also becomes more evident as parts of its 350-foot support truss are added a section at a time. Actually, building the station in space involves a combination of techniques. Robots built by Canada move the giant station pieces into place. Both the shuttle robot arm and the station's Canadon 2 have proven to be invaluable in the assembly of the outpost. Okay, the Johnny handles are removed. You can cover the waist ring. Okay, the drag valve position is good. To complete the assembly tasks, Astronauts don spacesuits and put the high-tech station parts together the old-fashioned way, by hand. The marked increase of spacewalks has been referred to as the Wall of EVAs, which so far has exceeded over 250 hours and is continually growing. At first, astronauts conduct spacewalks on the station exclusively through a docked space shuttle. This changes toward the end of phase two of station assembly when astronauts Jim Riley and Mike Gernhardt help install the station's own airlock called Quest, a new gateway into space. Coming out of the station is different than coming out of the payload bay in the orbiter. Uh, when you come out of the airlock in the orbiter, you have the payload bay and the structure of the vehicle all around you. Uh, coming out of the station, however, you're looking straight down 220 miles down to the surface of the Earth. As Mike described it during the EVA, he described it as, as skydiving 220 miles. You really do get this sense of, of nothing between you and, and the ground. Okay, here we are at the very front end of the International Space Station. Uh, this is uh, the uh, forward end of Node 2, and uh, this is uh, right behind this hatch is uh, the PMA, the pressurized mating adapter uh, to which the space shuttle docks uh, whenever the next space shuttle comes. You can see we have our flags up here at the most forward part. It's a 15-nation partnership, this International Space Station. So uh, we'll start with uh, the Node 2. We will uh, stop at the Kibo module here, the Japanese pressurized module and the Japanese logistics platform. We'll stop back there in a second. We'll take a look in the Columbus module, pride of uh, the European Space Agency, and our pride too. And then you can look down the stack and you can see uh, several other modules and uh, and even into the a little bit into the functional cargo block, the FGB, and then the service module. So it's a it's a really big space station that we got. Let's take a quick look out the window before it gets dark outside. We're going around uh, not every, the world every 90 minutes, so uh, it gets uh, we get to see a lot of sunrises and sunsets. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful up there. So this is looking out the port side of the space station and we're actually also on the front side, so front port side of the space station. 
And let's take a look what we can see out there. You can see the robot arm I was talking about, the GEM RMS. Those orange things are the solar arrays on the on the port side. And you can see we have a full set and uh, 15A STS-119 is going to be bringing up the, uh, the last uh, solar array on the starboard side. And take a look, there's our blue, be beautiful blue planet there. And uh, looking at this and where we are, I'd say we're over the uh, uh, South Indian Ocean. You can actually see some icebergs down there. So we're actually probably between um, Africa and Antarctica. You can actually see the different uh, shades of the blue water. Okay, so now fly with me. We're going to go to the uh, we're going to go to the Columbus module. Oxygen. We're making oxygen, and when we make oxygen, we're breaking down water into hydrogen and oxygen, and the oxygen comes right out here. The water we're making it either comes from the condensate uh, from the air conditioning system, you know, the water that's in the air, or urine. So we, this is a really neat uh, bio, um, regenerative. Uh, uh, life support system. Uh, these are, our, this is our, our pond, or our wall of water that's down here. Uh, we have different kinds of water and these are called contingency water containers, CWCs. And you can see different kinds. There's water that you can drink and water that you can use for other things like flush water or, or generating oxygen. In the meantime, we're kind of store, storing EVA related things here. Uh, you can see this is a safer, which is uh, a kind of a jet backpack that uh, we wear on the outside of our spacesuits in case we get separated from the spaceship. We can we can fly our way back in. I remember being a Capcom on STS-96 when I first saw these sites. That's pretty amazing. And we're floating into the Russian side of things. First and foremost, we are now in the pressurized adapter part of the functional cargo block. We call it the GAA, and it's also a docking port down below. As you carefully look down below, you can see the hatches, and inside the that what you can see in front of us is a uh, the docking mechanism for the Soyuz. Now Yuri's been busy unloading the progress. We just finished an EVA, so things here in the functional cargo block. Are very functional right now and very cargo y. So you can see things are just really, really full here in the FGB. As we leave the FGB here and go into the docking compartment. Docking compartment is another one of those vertical looks and it's a kind of a misnomer it's not just docking compartment but it's also a airlock so Yuri and I went out in our these two spacesuits a few weeks ago and went into open space and had a spacewalk continuing on down through here we'll stop here on the way back is our progress cargo vehicle the progress is a cargo ship unmanned uncrewed nobody driving and has the same kind of docking compartment it's very much based on the Soyuz design except it doesn't have any re-entry capability and we're gonna take a look outside and this is the hatch that I opened up and went outside for a spacewalk and we're looking aft on the space station there's a ladder some solar panels we're looking at the service module Sorry, yeah. Oh, excuse me, uh, Zvezda. And looking at our also our beautiful planet Earth. Let's see if we get a nice little view here of Earth. A little small treat. Because no tour of the space station would be complete without it. And that that'll wrap up the tour. This is the International Space Station. A very good example of what uh, human beings can do when we work when we work closely together.
you. National partnership. Learning how to fly in space. 